We're now going to start worksheet seven, and this is assembling the canvas and the front of the jacket together. So I've laid the jacket front on top of our canvases. You can see our pad stitching is this side, the domet will be against the wearer, making sure our pocket bags are laying flat and pinned into position. Now, pinning into position, I was able to line up the dart on the jacket front to the dart we have closed on our canvas, making sure that our pin here is in line with the cut line of our dart on the canvas. We also know from making our pattern for the canvas that the canvas darts are two and a half centimeters longer than the dart on the jacket front. So if I fold this over, we can see the pin is in the top of the dart on the jacket front, which is two and a half centimeters back from the cut line of the dart on the canvas. So we're able to line this up in the exact position before we start basting. There are a number of rows to baste and they need to be done in the order of the worksheet. So the first row starts from about seven and a half centimeters down from the shoulder, down through all the layers, through the dart, down to just above the hemline, which will take us just above the step here on the hem, because that is our hem allowance. As we baste, we smooth the fabric down, so we, and if there's any excess, it moves with us. So I am going to work across, but I'm gonna smooth the fabric as I go. I'm just gonna turn my pins around so I don't catch my hands on the points of the pin. So we need to smooth any excess from the shoulder line down towards the hem. So we're gonna start our basting. And as I said, I've turned my jacket front sideways just because I find it easier to work from right to left. But I'm still gonna smooth any excess down the jacket, which is um, illustrated on your worksheet, so you must follow the arrows um, of the smoothing of the fabric in front of your stitches. So I'm going to start um, approximately sort of seven and a half centimeters down from the shoulder, and we want to stitch down through the dart, through the welt, and the flap of the pocket. So we're going through all the layers of the canvases as well. So at the start here, where you have the French canvas and the chest canvas and the domette, it's all gonna be rather thick, but you'll feel it thin out as you go down. So we're just gonna continue basting. Down, making sure the jacket stays nice and smooth. Your stitches don't have to be small. Oh, it's rather thick just there. So now we're going to catch through all the, the pocket bag as well. making sure we're keeping it nice and smooth. As we work our way down. Through our dart. Just 
just going to remove that pin. Smoothing with the other hand, making sure the fabric is laying flat as we continue down. I'm now going to remove the other pin. see how thick it is to get through here because we have our piping, our jet, our pocket bag, everything yep, to get through. done a large stitch there because I found it very thick and difficult there. Keep smoothing. I can feel now I'm at the edge of my pocket bag. I'm just going to do a couple more stitches and then that is the first row of the basting complete. Now before we can do the second row of basting, which when you look at your worksheet will come across from the waist, we have to secure the inside of the pocket bag for the double piped pocket. So we are going to fold back our jacket front. So over sewing to baste the reinforcement of the pocket in that we put on before we did the piping for the pocket and the pocket bag to the canvas. So I'm just doing a, a little over sew to attach. When we folded the front of the jacket back to expose the pocket bag, we did so carefully to make sure the pocket didn't get disturbed. So this is actually lying in the position it would be when it's on the wearer. Fasten off our end and trim. Once we finish basting the bottom pocket, we also do the same for the chest pocket. So they're both held securely in position before we fold the front back over for our next row of basting. I'm going to show the over sew of this pocket from a different angle to see it's, if it's easier for you to, to view. Um, I'm just doing a couple of stitches at the bottom to secure my end and then just catching the canvas and the pocket bag together. A 
we're not pulling the stitches um, tight. We're not looking to cause any distortion. It's just so that they are secure and all the layers become one. And again, up the edge of the pocket in, which we used as the reinforcement. Both pocket bags secure, fold back our front into place and we can start our second row of basting. Our second row of basting is from the waist, which we can see the suppression, from our dart across stopping two and a half centimeters from the edge of the jacket. So this time we smooth towards the front edge of the jacket. So I'm starting in the waist. I'm just doing a single back stitch to secure my basting in place. So smooth towards the front edge as we baste. As I said, stop in two and a half centimeters before the front edge. The next row is from the waistline we have just stitched down to the same length as our first row of basting. This time we are smoothing the cloth towards the front and down at the same time. So again, I'm going to turn my jacket front sideways. So I am going to come, um, I'm sort of gonna work that this section here would be split into three. So we're coming down just a little bit in front of where that flap it ends. So I'm gonna start the waist and then I'm going to go down and forward in one motion as we smooth our fabric onto the canvas. You'll be able to keep your canvas um, in one place a lot more than I am. I'm just trying to make sure you have um, a view uh, with the film. Okay, so keep down and forward. So that is our third row of basting that is visible from the front. The next row runs parallel, dividing what we have left in half. And again, the action of smoothing the fabric forward and down is the same. 
and then the basting focuses on above the waist. So just follow the worksheet step by step and the arrows to know how to smooth the fabric. You will also then, as we get to the other side of the jacket, open out um, the fabric to baste other sides of the pocket bag. All this is explained clearly and step by step in your worksheet. Once the basting is completed on the jacket front, the last row we have just done has come from the break point here, across the top, around the armhole, into the waist, continues from the waist back down to the hem. After that one is completed, to finish the assembly of the canvas to the jacket front, we have to put a cross stitch to join the canvas to the top of the um, pocket in here on our piped pocket. So we're going to do our cross stitch. I'm going to do this in the black thread, so I hope this is going to be clearly visible for you. So we need to make a cross, we need to be diagonal, so we can see how my thread is lying. I'm going to go in, I want to catch the pocket in underneath and do a small stitch. I pull the thread out, and then I go diagonal again, catch in the pocket in and do a small stitch. So my needle is going in and back to the start. So we're doubling back on ourselves, so we create this cross. So again, in the canvas and the pocket in, and then the needle comes out towards the start of my cross stitch. So we're going back on ourselves, creating the cross. This is just a few stitches over to hold our layers together. You can feel when you're through the pocket in. And obviously we want to make sure that we are not coming through to the front. And this will continue across our dart closure because we know our pocket comes a couple of centimetres in front of this dart. So I'm holding this a little bit awkward, but it's just for you to see the stitches. And then I'm just going to secure by going through at the same point and my thread through the loop. It'll create a small knot. I'm going to go through the layer of canvas, back out, and trim my thread end. So once that cross stitch is complete, that is the assembly of the canvas to the jacket front also complete. At the next stage now, we're going to trim our canvas level with our jacket front. When we do this, be careful that we don't trim any of the jacket. And we do this all the way around the jacket front. Through 
through all the layers of our canvases. It'll be a little bit thicker when we get to the top to trim. And we can also trim around our armhole edge. Then from the side of the canvas, we're going to mark our centimeter seam allowance. So I have my pattern master and I'm just going to mark in our seam allowance on our lapel area. Make sure you allow for the curve. It's not a straight line. Once we have our seam allowance marked, this area then we're going to pad stitch. So we're going to talk about the pad stitching of the lapel area now. So I've started to pad stitch here um, and you would continue parallel from the break line that we basted out towards the front edge of the lapel and we want to pad stitch for about 3.8 to 4 centimeters. Then we are going to fold the front back on itself, still pad stitching, but this fold will naturally create um, the angle in which the lapel lies when it is being worn. And what it'll also do is it'll create extra ease in the canvas to go around the bend of the lapel as it folds over. So this last little few rows, few centimeters, we want to stitch with the natural roll and shape that the lapel is going to lie. Now we're pad stitching in the color of the jacket. Because when we pad stitch the lapel area, the stitch actually comes through to the right side. Now there is the glint of my needle. So what I have done, I've also stitched one in yellow. Here I've started the pad stitching. So that you can see from the right side how small these stitches need to be. We don't want to, uh, to make a feature of these. They need to be quite discreet. The idea is that um, the, the wearer is unaware that they're there. When the jacket is on, this folds over, and there's a facing area here we see on the lapel. So when you are stitching, be very careful that it is just a strand or two that you pick up on the reverse. We're obviously in the self-color thread. This is hardly noticeable. All we can see is the little shadows of dimples that are created by the stitch. So we will now continue and complete the rest of this pad stitching to the stitch line that we marked previously to complete the pad stitching on the lapel. You can see from doing the pad stitch with the lapel rolled over that it already has a tendency to stand and curl in the direction it will finally lay. And we can also see that the canvas has started to creep back from the edge of the main fabric where excess has been taken up in this roll. This means when the canvas is pressed back that there is no tightness here. So it'll sit nice and flat. So once our pad stitching is complete. We can now trim away our seam allowance around our canvas front edge 
and across the hem. When we are doing this, it is important um, to be careful as we do not want to trim the jacket fabric underneath. All we're looking at is trimming at the centimeter that we marked on our canvas earlier on, our seam allowance. So we do this all the way down the front edge. I say being very careful not to get any jacket fabric. So here you can see we have some stitches in the way. So I'm just going to snip them out of the way there so I can get past to trim our canvas. I'm trying to do this so that it is um, visible for you on the camera. So I am making sure I'm coming on the inside edge of my pencil line here because when we sew our jacket together and we construct our hem, we do not want the thickness of this canvas in the seam allowance. So we need to make sure that we come back at least a centimeter so when we sew along here and attach the facing later on the canvas is not within the seam allowance and it doesn't make it bulky when it turns through to the right side so that is our canvas trimmed across the front edge we also need to do across the top of the lapel coming just past the brake line and then continuing that line straight down. So once this is all trimmed, we can now tape the front edge. So we're now going to tape our front edge. On the notes, there is um, a piece of woven tape that is hand sewn, aligning the edge of the tape to the edge of the canvas, creating um, a more rigid, a harder border around the front edge in which when we turn the jacket in the right way, it gives a crisp edge. We are actually using um, a woven interfacing that is bias cut and we are going to fuse it, placing it half and half over the cut edge of the canvas to the jacket front. We are using a bias cut strip because our jacket front is curved. So when we come down to our curved edge, because this is bias cut, this will sit neatly around the shape without any distortion. If, there were, if the jacket front was straight, we could get away with straight cut tape. Now it is important when we um, fuse this tape to the jacket front that we press not iron. So the difference being is we have it here, we have our iron and we press. We uh, put pressure on, we have weight there and it will fuse the tape to the jacket. We will then lift the iron and move it across to a new area and the tape then will adhere again. We do not slide the iron across as this could create a stretch on the curve of our jacket. So we lift and place and lift and place as we go round the jacket front, pressing, not ironing. Just for reference, this iron here is not plugged in and it is not on, hence I can touch it, so please be careful when you do the actual thing using a hot iron. We also tape along the edge of the flannel, 
And this time we're using a woven tape that is straight cut, so there is no give, because we want this to be rigid. The tape goes in line with the edge of the flannel from the neck edge down. Now I have marked on my tape sections that are 7.6 centimeters long. So what we're going to do on the first section, we're just going to start by basting this into position. I'm basting through all the layers. And we are sitting behind the brake line. So we're just on the edge of the flannel. When I get to my first mark of 7.6, I'm going to do a little back tack here because I want this to be very secure. I am now going to pull the tape as I baste. So it's going to create ripples either side. And we're going to do this till I get to the next mark of 7.6. When I get to my 7.6 mark, I am going to back tack again just to hold in that fullness and then I'm going to continue basting down to the edge of my tape. The process of taping on the edge of our flannel here by the brake line is also known as a bridle. What we're doing here, creating a stabilizing edge for the bias of the fold of the lapel so that during wear this doesn't stretch and bag and get distorted and start sitting away from the body. So once we've tacked this in place we're then going to cross stitch um, over to hold in position. When we cross stitch our roll line tape into position, we want to come right to the edges of the tape because we want to make sure we are keeping the tape flat. We don't want this to roll during construction and wear. We want these stitches to hold this flat and in place. So our stitches are quite large as we span from one side of the tape to the other. We'll do this all the way along the tape. Once we get to the area where we created the ripples, the cross stitch will st help to um, flatten those ripples out at the edges. I'm just going to continue this all the way along. Make sure we are not coming through. We have the canvas here we can attach, which is just one layer, but obviously on the flannel, we have um, numerous layers. If you wish to whiz to the end on the video, section, feel free.
nearly to the end. going to secure with a, a second stitch there at the end. So our row line tape or our bridle is in position. We now need to press our row line tape. Um, when we press this we need to make sure that the lapel area falls free. So we have a couple of options that we could put our lapel right on the edge of the ironing board so we could press and this allows the lapel to fall free or we can use our clapper or point presser as um, it is also known and we can lay our jacket front our taped roll line along the top edge of our wood here, of the point presser. And then we can also press this area. I'm unable to get my iron all the way along due to the way I have it set up here to record it. But it is important that the lapel area falls free while you press the row line tape. We are now going to attach our facing to the front edge. So with right sides together, so I have my cross mark to denote the wrong side when I was cutting it out, you will see on your pattern that there's a notch. There's also a notch on the centre front. So we align these two notches together and pin. We align the top edges of the lapel and pin into position. There will be some ease in this area. It is important to manipulate and ease in the facing to this front edge. The ease is necessary to allow for the roll of the facing when it comes over to the other side. We start stitching from the notch here on the top edge of the lapel with a centimeter seam allowance. From the notch we back tack, we come across all the way down the front edge we follow the curve again, easing in any fullness around, pivot at the corner and down.